Hi and welcome to Scotty's Take Down Info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. Today I'm going to do a little DIY video on the Levelmatic 1000. So this is just a, uh, it's actually a fuel level sensor. It uses a little ultrasonic transceiver here. And how it works is you put this on top of your uh, this fits you take the fill cap off of like a fuel tank or a water tank and you plop this guy on top and he is connected to this guy so let us do a little demo here when you press and hold the button he shows 72 percent and if i if i move the sensor it will uh, update the screen every two seconds right so what's the deal Basically, I have a, a hot water heating system, and uh, naturally that means there's a boiler, and the boiler uses heating oil, uh, which is actually just diesel fuel with red dye in it, so that and they charge half as much money where I live, and uh, if you put the red fuel in your car, then they fine you a lot of money, but uh, heating oil is just diesel, uh, just a lot cheaper. Uh, anyway, so naturally, in order to have a boiler, you have to have a fuel tank, and the fuel tank that I have here is a steel fuel tank. Modern tanks are usually trans, translucent plastic and they have like a large fill cap and so you can see the level of the fuel, right? This one is like 30, 40 years old and it's uh, welded steel and the fill cap is about this big and there are no other sort of entrances to the tank on the top. So, and there's no fuel gauge. So basically the only way to measure the fuel in the tank is to get like a weight on a string and put the string down the tank and that's not exactly great so I thought about various ways to have, to make a fuel gauge and uh, most of them involve putting some mechanical type gizmo inside the tank which is not very good so then I thought of ultrasound just like the sensor on the on the, the bumper of your car for example you know like if you shift it into reverse it beeps when you get too close to something same principle so you know DIY is great and everything but it's kind of all about opportunity cost, right? Um, if you can go on Amazon and buy something quickly and relatively cheaply, you save a lot of time. So that leaves you free to do other things. So I did what everybody else does. I hopped on Amazon and I found a, a solution, which is, it's, uh, it's actually a fuel level sensor that comes in two parts. You can use it on, say, like a heating oil tank or if you have like a water cistern or something your off-grid or whatever. Um, so yeah I found this one on Amazon and it's kind of this unit you take off the fill cap you plop this sucker on top there's an LCD display on top that shows you the level of the fuel right and there's also a remote display unit so that the the base unit on top of the fill cap actually uses radio signal to send the level to your remote display and it was actually pretty funny <clears throat> because they as part of their sort of like marketing talk they said, and our unit is so great because you can put the remote display unit in your living room so you'll always know how much fuel you have. And I thought, like, yeah, that's kind of retarded because, like, when I sit down in my living room to watch a movie, the last thing I'm, I'm going to say is, like, wait, hold everything. I need to know how much fuel we have in our tank. And then look at the display and go, oh, thank God, 60%. You may now press play. No. So that was kind of like goofy, you know? And the second thing is uh, this particular unit and the ones like it seems to be like one Chinese manufacturer and they sell it under different brand names, you know? Uh, they were all like 150 euros, which is an insane amount of money for what you were getting. And worse yet, not only were they way overpriced, but they all got like one and two star reviews. And uh, the remote unit, of course, is for if you have an external buried fuel tank, for example, you can have the the rem the remote display inside your house and that was actually another thing that people complained about in the reviews was they said you know I got my buried fuel tank it's five meters away and it's supposed to transmit up to like you know whatever 50 meters or whatever and the batteries died the remote display isn't working it's a piece of crap and they send it back right okay so that wasn't an option I looked el elsewhere couldn't find anything so I decided well maybe I'll just be forced to make my own and then that's when the Levelmatic 1000 was born. So first thing I did is I looked for an ultrasonic sensor and I found a couple different ones and then I got 
uh, an Arduino, uh, an Arduino Geek Development Beginners Kit, and I put the whole thing together. So um, I should note that I'm going to go over the basics of uh, what's what's actually in the Levelmatic and what uh, how it works, and also some of the pitfalls, and uh, maybe a little about a little bit about some of the different sensors you can use. But this is not going to be like the kind of video where like I'll show you every hole that I've drilled and all that kind of stuff because that's not very, yeah. You can't print a YouTube video out. But what I will do is um, I'll put a link down in the description and you can click that and go to my website where I have like schematics and a link to my code on GitHub and like everything you need to, uh, to, to make it. And if you don't know anything about Arduinos, don't worry because you can go to arduino.cc and they have excellent tutorials. Um, there's actually a whole YouTube channel by a guy who uh, it's actually pretty cool because he walks you through like literally in painful detail how to get set up with an arduino how to flash code to it how to use the serial interface debugger like everything it's that's all out there so okay so this this is the completed uh the completed thing this i'm not going to show you inside this because it's kind of a disaster and i actually sealed it because the room where my fuel tank is is kind of it's kind of like a basement type room. It's kind of grungy, hence the the lovely shiny uh, um, silicone stuff on here. But this is basically just uh, a Dremel, it's a Dremel uh, speed click and the little cutting discs. You know, it was just a spare plastic case, so I cut some holes in it and uh, painted it black, stuck the lovely label on there, <laughs> and then I put some neodymium magnets on the back so you can. Uh, because it's a metal tank, you can just bonk, stick it on the side of the tank. Uh, and this guy is just, this is just the sensor that I, that I chose. Um, this piece of metal, uh, mad props go to my homie Pierre because I needed something. This is actually the, the inner diameter. If you remove the fill cap, this fits perfectly in there. And he actually milled this up for me on his fancy lathe. And uh, I put some uh, not very good paint on it just to keep it from rusting on the top. Um, so you just stick that dude in here. And then he, take your fill cap off, and he sits on there, and that's your sensor. You're done. Uh, and then, as I showed, when you want to read the level, you just press and hold the button. And uh, as long as you keep holding the button, Bob's your uncle. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. But first, we want to look at, this is actually the, uh, this is the development my sort of development board that I'll be using for various Arduino projects. And um, the cost of all these parts, again, I'll, I'll give links to all this, but basically uh, pretty much all this stuff came in the, 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 the sensor board here. This guy, which is, he's got a little cable and he's got, you can yank that sucker off. This is the actual ultrasonic module. And he has this standard four pin header with five volts ground and a trigger and an echo pin and it works exactly the same as the the more common HC SR04 ultrasonic sensor um so yeah I had to buy this separately I'm pretty sure I got I got this on banggood.com uh, which is a Chinese site that sells electronics in case you didn't know <laughs> um, this guy was I think like 10 bucks and all the other parts here that you see, like the display and the little resistor and these jumper wires and the actual Arduino, um, it was all about, I think it was like $21 or something, and I ordered them from Banggood. It takes a couple weeks to arrive, but it's far cheaper to order from like Amazon or Banggood because these this Arduino Uno costs about, I think it's like 20 euros on the Arduino CC site, and you can get these for like, you know, as little as like 5 or $6 if you, if you buy like several at a time or something, so... Total cost here, you're looking at about like 30 bucks, and then instead of 150, and you just have to do a little bit of wiring. Uh, it looks kind of complicated, it's really not, because this is the schematic diagram, which again will be available on my website. I'll put a link. Um, so this is this is pretty much it. You've got your Arduino, you've got your breadboard, the LCD has a pin header, you just stick it into the board, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you have wiring to hook up the LCD to the Arduino. There's code available. Um, as I said, I actually wrote all the code, and you can download it and flash it on your your Arduino, and you change a few variables, you flash it on, and you're off and running. Um, 
I did, I put a momentary switch on the positive terminal from the 9 volt battery, and the reason I did that is because this whole system from a 9 volt battery draws about 48 milliamps. So if we assume, okay, well let's round up to about 50 milliamps, 9 volt batteries, alkaline, can typically supply about 500 milliamp hours, which means if this guy was on all the time, uh, at 500 milliamp hours, this battery is going to be drained in about 10 hours. So if you want something that's continuously showing the level of fuel in your fuel tank or water in your water tank or whatever, uh, you probably will want to power it with a little AC adapter. Uh, that's why I actually just put the momentary switch, because you press and hold the switch. Every two seconds, if the level changes, it updates the display. It's basically just that momentary switch, uh, the little red guy that I just showed, that's literally just sending power to the whole thing and it'll loop every two seconds update the display and when you let go it's off and that way the battery will last like forever uh, a couple different notes about uh, gotchas in this let me get my dry erase board so the there's two different sensors you can use I chose this one this is the JSN SR04T version 2. And as I said, the pinout is identical to this very common Arduino sensor. The reason I chose this one is that it has this kind of remote sensor, so I can put the sensor in my little orange metal thing, and then I can ha I've got this long cord, and I can put the, the black box wherever I want, like in this case, mag magnetically attached to the tank. This guy is actually waterproof, so he's perfect, but he's less accurate than this guy. And by less accurate, what I mean is that uh, this guy, let's just put them on here, and then we can draw some, some stuff. This guy measures between 2 and 500 centimeters. Uh, the resolution is, I think, about 0.3 centimeters. And this guy, the one I actually used, is 25 to 450 centimeters and it's about 0.5 centimeter resolution. They both use about the same amount of power. Again, this one, I use this one because it's waterproof and what this means is that the distance between your sensor and the level of uh, the liquid in the tank, if that distance is less than 25 centimeters, this guy either shows usually 0% or it gives a timeout error because the little board uh, sends back a, a boo-boo basically. What that means is that when your tank is full, this guy is going to give you an erroneous reading. And I didn't care about that. The, the fact that this guy is actually like water and chemical proof is far more important to me. Uh, also considering that this is not going to rust and parts on here might. You might get like corrosion on the board. Uh, so I decided to go with this one. You can just drop this one in. This is the HC SR04. You can, this is literally like a drop-in replacement for this guy. So you can use the same code. Uh, the same schematic, everything, just replace this sensor instead of this one. You've got two holes to drill and it'll still work just fine. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is... <clears throat> oh, also, this guy has a beam angle of about 15 degrees, which is very narrow, and this one has a beam angle of 70 degrees. So when you use this one, you'll run into a few more problems, which I'm about to describe. This is kind of a drawing of the fuel tank. This is the fill cap, uh, the, uh, you know, that's where the fill cap goes. So I have my sensor sitting in the orange thing right there, right? So because this one has kind of a wider beam angle, it works okay in this case, but uh, you couldn't actually use this guy. Like I tried using him in like having like a kind of like a PVC tube, and you have to be careful with him because he has a wider beam angle. Uh, you have to be careful of like the walls. So like if you if you if you took this guy and you put him in like some kind of pipe like this, and and here was your here was your sensor. This guy might cause uh, you know because he's going like this. You might get reflections off off of the walls, and then he's going to give you a faulty reading. If you use this guy, it's going to work. Well, theoretically. I tested and it does work, but you know how that you know how that kind of thing goes, you know. Nothing ever works perfectly. This guy has a 15 degree beam angle, so he's going to work much better 
in that kind of application because he's far more directed. So, But again, I chose this one because I don't care about full tank accuracy. I care more about accuracy when it's empty. And uh, I wanted the, the waterproof, you know, if, if anything splashes on here, it's going to be okay. If anything gets on this, you're going to be in trouble because these are just, you know, it's all kind of exposed in there. So I thought, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, use, I'll use that guy. Right, so that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, you can get the schematics and everything, the code and all that good stuff uh, on the link in the description. It'll take you to my website, and I've got a whole write-up explaining everything. Also, the code itself, um, as I mentioned, available on GitHub. There's a link to that, and he, it's extremely well documented. Like, I put huge comments in, in everything, so uh, it should be should be fairly straightforward. Um, it works. It's pretty cool. The, uh, I should mention the, it's also very accurate. The one that I found online doesn't vary. It doesn't, I think it had like a, like a six LED bar graph or something. I'm not sure exactly how accurate it was, but the one that I made actually has a, it has the, has like the bar graph and then it also shows you the percentage and the bar graph is, it's, it's actually 50 pixels long. So it's kind of like a half resolution and the percentage is actually, uh, basically full full resolution, if you will, so you can have, you know, 57% level, whatever, and with a, with an accuracy of like half a centimeter, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. So yeah, if you want to, if you want to build one of these, uh, hop on over to my site, you can get all the information, and like I said, for the Arduino, if you're unsure what you're doing, um, it's very, very easy. It's, I've developed things with microcontrollers before, and you had to buy like $5,000 worth of equipment and have like UV erasable, like reprogrammable uh, you know, microcontrollers and all this nonsense. And with Arduino, it's very, very simple. You have a USB connection that provides power. It connects it to your computer via um, sort of a simulated serial port over USB. Um, it's actually, like, very, very easy, and there's code available for, like, darn near everything. Like, you, you don't have to be, like, a master C programmer to use an Arduino. There are tons of examples out there. There's there's library and code. I mean, this this what I did is like the code for this LCD display was literally like copy paste, and I, I I tweaked a few things to have my own bar graph. That was probably the most difficult part. And even for the sensor, I started writing my own code, and then found out that there's actually a, a function called pulse in on Arduino that does all the work for me. So I did all this hard work, and then went, oh, there's a function that does that for me. Okay. So um, yeah, that was my. That's the Levelmatic 1000. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comments on YouTube, or if you hop over to my website and read the article, you can use the contact form. And for more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.